So I was arrested at the airport. How they knew I had this drug, I don't know. The person that sent you, mm -hmm. is it Kenyan? It's Kenyan, yes. Okay. So when I got there, actually there was nobody waiting for me. I was all by myself. They were only lying to me that somebody was waiting for me at the airport. Or maybe there was somebody waiting for me, but the moment they saw me arrested, they took they off. It was me and myself. When I was convicted for 12 years in prison, this is when it hit me, really, I'm going to be here for a while. What am I going to tell my son? What am I going to tell my mother? It's so much shame for my mom, a woman in church, for people to hear her daughter has been caught with drugs. My son in school, in college, how is he going to explain to the others about the mother being caught with drugs? Hello, good morning and a warm welcome to LNS. My name is Lynn Gugi. Now, if you are joining us, then you do understand we have a special series here on our platform dubbed From Pain to Power, where we are covering stories of women who have served time in prison and they are now out impacting their own lives and impacting the lives of other people. My guest today spent time in a seashells a prison after she was arrested for drug trafficking and she's about to share her story with us on how she ended up there and how her her life is after prison and just to remind you this is a beautiful uh, partnership a collaboration between us and clean start and you all know we brought you the story of Teresa and she inspired all of us and maybe to just look at people from prison in a different light and understand that we have all sinned and also get to realize that not everyone who is in prison is guilty and therefore let's observe innocent until proven guilty and Brace them back in our society and help in the reintegration process. And now, without further ado, please allow me to let my guest today introduce herself. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Niko salama. Niko salama kabisa. I must introduce yourself. Yeah. My name is Lea Wanjiro Kongo. Mm -hmm. uh, born in Kiambu and brought up in Yandero. Yeah. I'm a mother of one. Yes. And uh, I'm 58 years old. Really? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I am not saying that really because I'm shocked. Yeah. I'm saying really because we might need to talk about the secrets later on. Uh -huh. You are gorgeous. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. How is life? Uh, so far, so good. Uh -huh. Yeah. How are you feeling? I'm feeling okay. Mm. Yeah, God is good. Yeah. yeah. Now, I know not many people in life mm. would even want to admit that they've served life in prison. Yes. People would rather let that part of their lives be a secret. Mm -hmm. Not many people would even want to come yeah. on a national platform yeah. and say, I served time. Yeah. Why is it important for you to share your story? Well, uh, I feel it's very important for me to share my story. Yeah. Because uh, I would really like to educate somebody else out there mm. who could be going through what I've gone through. Yeah. And uh, so many people go to prison, come out of prison, and uh, they are suffering because of shame and rejection. Mm -hmm. They don't want to say anything about prison yeah. because there is a stigma mm -hmm. about prison. Yeah. Whenever somebody mentions prison, they think of criminals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So... I'm here to share my story okay. so that I can help somebody else out there yeah. who is suffering with shame mm. and rejection. I appreciate it. Yeah. And I always say in this show, mm -hmm. we owe you everything. Yeah. You owe us nothing. Yeah. You don't owe us your story, mm -hmm. but we owe it to you. Yes. The fact that you are willing to share your deepest truths yeah. with us mm -hmm. in order to impact a life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if we could just take us through your story, mm -hmm. how did you end up there? Well... This goes back in 2011. Mm -hmm. As I said earlier, I'm a mother of one and yeah. a single mother. Mm -hmm. So I had my, I have my son and I had my son to take care of. Yeah. And uh, around that time he was in college. And I didn't have a job. So here I met a friend of mine and I was struggling with life in Kenya. Mm -hmm. And uh, she told me, Leah, I can help you yeah. get some money for your child's education. And so she told me it's easy. We just send you with a parcel to Seychelles and, and you get some money. Okay. Actually, I'm not those people who say 
they didn't know what they were doing. I knew what I was doing oh. because I've come out of that denial. Oh, God. This one is the one that kills people. Denial. Mm. I've come out of it. Mm. I knew what I was doing. Yes. I knew it was drugs. Yeah. But the money, I was looking at the money. I get the money, I come back, I take care of my child, I take care of my mom and the rest of the family. Oh. That was it. Yeah, had you job hunted here in Kenya, tried a lot of things. Yeah, yeah, I've been doing, uh, I've been doing se several jobs in mm. Kenya. I was even once a teacher. I had a small business and not, things have not been working out for Where me. Where you were a teacher? Yeah. Where? Back at home. Wow. Yeah. And I had to quit because of certain circumstances. Mm. I've been working in hotels, I've worked in hotels, I've even worked at, with Sarova hotels, but things have not been working out for me. I've worked in tour companies, I've worked for Vakshino tours. Mm. It didn't work out for me. Mm. Yeah? So, here I go to Seychelles, knowing that I was coming back with good money. But they had not told me the dangers because they had told me all is clear. Somebody is waiting for me. As soon as I arrive there, somebody will pick me at the airport. And so it was it. smooth sailing. So this package, yeah. you are taking it from Kenya to Seychelles. Yeah. They've packed everything for you. It's well packed. Nicely. Nicely. How much were they going to pay you? Uh, 500,000 Kenya shillings. Mm -hmm. To go and just come back. To go and just come back. Okay. Yeah. And they had given me a down payment of, I think, 150,000 Kenya shillings. Oh. Which part of it I left, I had cleared my son's school fees. And the, other, the rest of the money, I had it with me. Mm -hmm. So I was arrested at the airport. How they knew I had this drug, I don't know. But uh, this is a cartel, which is not very good, because people which hunt each other, uh -huh. the drug dealers. Uh -huh. So maybe somebody somewhere knew that the person who sent me was sent me to Seychelles, mm -hmm. and they whispered, they whispered yes. something yeah. there. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It happened. The person that sent you, mm -hmm. is it Kenyan? It's Kenyan, yes. Okay. So when I got there, actually there was nobody waiting for me. I was all by myself. They were only lying to me that somebody was waiting for me at the airport. Or maybe there was somebody waiting for me, but the moment they saw me arrested, they took they off. Disappear. It was me and myself. So when I was arrested, in fact, they retrieved the drugs from wherever it was, and straight to the police station, then to the cells, the remand, and it all started now. Mm. So, as much as I cried, nothing could change. Yeah? I was caught with it, and I was caught with it, mm. and I couldn't come out of it. What drugs were they? This was heroin. Mm. Yeah. So, we went on. Now the court procedures and all that, now I was in remand. Mm. Okay, but those guys, they were pretty good to me because when I asked them, the, whoever was investigating my case, if I could say, they could take the money I, I had, they said it back to my son. He agreed. Oh. Yeah, and they took all that money and they sent it back home. And I was relieved. Hmm. But now the worst part was, how am I going to explain this to my son? What am I going to tell him? How old did your son back then? Back then he was about, I think, 28. Oh, Lord. So he 27. was in college? Yeah, he was in college. Yeah, at Jacobs. Mm. I didn't know how to explain to him. But uh, so this gave me trauma. Yeah? And it took me quite a while to get out of it. And um, this trauma, I, with this trauma, I developed high blood pressure. I was in and out of hospital. And uh, after two, three, four months, my case was over and I was convicted for 12 years in prison. Yeah, when I was convicted for 12 years in prison, this is when it hit me, really, I'm going to be here for a while. In fact, I was contemplating on suicide. But uh, God gave me the strength to move on. Mm. Because what I was suffering from was, what am I going to tell my son? What am I going to tell my mother? It's so much shame for my mom, a woman in church, for people to hear her daughter has been caught with drugs. My son in school, in college, how is he going to explain to the others about the mother being caught with drugs? And coincidentally, my son was taking uh, a course in criminology, oh. and here the mother is in with drugs. I mean, 
we didn't have together. Yeah. Anyway, eventually, I had to talk to my son because he was a grown up. Mm. And I told him, son, listen here. To tell you the truth, I've been arrested and I'll be here for a while. Take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. Take care of your grandma. He told me, mom, don't worry. I understand. You are doing this for me, for a better life. But mom, don't do it again. God will take care of you. Take care of yourself. Don't worry. Yeah. How was that like coming from him? <sighs> Too much. Yeah? It wasn't easy because these are the things that made me develop high blood pressure, which I'm still suffering. I'm still suffering from blood pressure because it, whenever it goes down, it comes back again. Mm -hmm. And then I had a problem with my periods. They started like overflowing. There's even a time I bled so much to a point that I was rushed to the hospital and they, they had to transfuse blood. And again, when I came out of hospital after a month, the period started again. So I had to go for a major operation. Wow. They had to remove my uterus. Mm -hmm. So all these things happening to me, I just, I was just thinking, God, let me just go. God, let me just go. Yeah. But around that time when I was in hospital for this operation, there were some sisters who came to visit me mm. from church. Mm. And when they came to visit me, they, gave, they, they showed so, so much love, so much love. And then I asked myself, God, I'm in a foreign country. How come these people love me so much? Because they used to visit me every day. Mm. And whenever they come, they bring me goodies. They ask me, what do you want? Mm. What, what, what? Oh. And I wonder, oh God, you've given me another family. I'm thinking of my, my family back at home. But here I have people who love me so much. So now I started thinking about God. So out of hospital, I went back to prison. That was in 20, 2012, 2013. Mm. So it's around 2013 now I started reflecting much on my life and started reflecting on God. And uh, somehow my turning around came. I give my life to Jesus fully. Yeah, back in Kenya I used to say I'm saved, but I was really not saved. Mm -hmm. It's there in seashells, in those cells that I got saved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's where I met Jesus. Yeah. Really. Mm. You know why? One day, like I was praying mm -hmm. down on my knees, mm -hmm. I told God, one thing I ask you, take care of my mother. And please don't let my son suffer. After college, give him a job. Oh, yeah. And really, God gave my son a job. Yeah, because he called me and he told me, Mommy, don't worry, I've got a job. Mm -hmm. We were allowed a phone call home. Yeah. So that's how I started my life in the Seychelles. Mm -hmm. The first years were quite hard. Mm -hmm. But after that, I adopted to the life in Seychelles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The person that had sent you, did you try getting in touch with them? No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. These people, once you're arrested. It's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. Because you don't even have their contacts. In fact, those people who traffic drugs, they are only being used. These people, they, you, you don't have their contacts. Some you don't even know them because you, there is a mediator between you and the big boss. And even this mediator, you don't have their numbers. Yeah. And even if you had their numbers, they cannot help you because they don't want to be connected with you. Mm -hmm. So it's you and you alone. Yeah. Yeah. Just you and yeah. yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So f for me and them, mm -hmm. it was finished there. Mm -hmm. It was finished. Mm -hmm. I had to carry my cross alone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And moving on, I had to move on. Mm -hmm. So when I, I turned around and I gave my life to Jesus, things started changing. One, uh, the deputy superintendent happened to, st she started liking me now. Oh. She gave me a job outside. She told me now, Leah, you could be growing now that you are no longer sick. You can grow some flowers here. The seedlings, make some seedlings. When people come visiting their families, you don't have a family here, you sell to them. You get some money. Buy yourself something at the tax shop. And I started growing. She'll bring me the paper, the, those small paper bags, the oh, black ones, you know? Oh, yes. And I put my plants there. Uh -huh. And then I'd, I had a small garden there. Yeah. And then uh, uh, you could see my plants there. I lined them up during visiting days. Them, the Sishiros are having their families. Me, I don't have a family. So me, I'd be there. And you know God's favor? Yeah? God's favor. These Sishiros came to like me. 
these people visiting their families yes. in prison, they would say, is this Kenyan? Oh, Kenyan lady, your flower good, you know? And they would buy. Let me buy. <laughs> Let me buy. <laughs> so <laughs> so the, my, I was not yeah. allowed to, you know, the money. Yes, I would yes. tell them, okay, put the, my money in the office. Yes. So my, my account was just growing. Yeah. You know? Mm. There was money mm. in my account. Mm. So I never lacked anything. Yeah. Whatever I wanted from the tax shop. You got. I got. Now, let me ask you. Mm. Try to compare something here, yeah. right? Yeah. I've done stories of women in prison here in Kenya. Yeah. Sanitary towels even sometimes. You know those pads? It's a lot. Even some of them don't even have until now. And they're in prison. Like life in a Kenyan prison is so hard. In seashells, did you have a hard time? Actually, no, no. Life in prison in the seashells compared to Kenya is far much better there. Mm. One thing, those things like the sanitary towels we were given, uh, food wise, like as we were only 15 women, we were cooking for ourselves. Our diet was uh, rice, chicken, yeah, rice, chicken, and fish. Hey, yeah, what? Yeah. And uh, we were not forced to go out and work. You'd go to work if you want want to work. Somehow people there are very lazy. Yeah. So like me coming from Kenya, and I know if I work, I'll get some money. To I have to do it yes. for money. Yeah. Yeah. So comparing the the the, the, two. the, the, the two, life there is far much better. Mm. It's easier. The problem is, is now you miss your family. Mm -hmm. It's about the family. Yeah. But all in all, behind bars is behind bars. Wherever it is. Mm -hmm. Behind bars is behind bars. Yeah. A prison is a prison. A prison is a prison. In Kenya, abroad, a prison is a prison. You don't have your freedom. Yes. You don't do whatever you want. You can't just walk out of the gate and say, I'm going shopping. Yeah. No, you're in prison. And you have to adapt to the rules. Yes. Yeah. So... Ukapambana. Nikapambana. Mm. Nikapambana. Mungu wakanisaidia. Sasa, hii nakuwa kwa kayangu. Mm. Because now, mm. they made me in charge of Bible study. Oh. Yeah? So Lea now was the person in charge of Bible study. Yeah. And now, anybody coming for Bible study, there were outsiders coming for Bible study. Yeah. We had even foreigners coming for mm. Bible to come and see prison. And they'll come for Bible study with us. Wow. We have, especially from South Africa. And mm -hmm. whenever they'll come, they would ask for Leah, God's favor. And whenever they come to see Leah, they bring some goodies with them. They even bring clothes for yes. me. You know, I was okay. I was okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now, around that time, now I have spent some time in prison, about five, six years. The president of Seashells came visiting Seashells prison. And I uh, happened to have a word with him. And I told him, my wish is, she, he told me, make a wish. I told him my wish is to get back home. I want to see my mother. She's ailing. He told me it will happen one day. I asked him when. I've been here for so long. I've transformed. I've changed my life. I'm a better person now. You can see what I'm doing. I took him to my garden. He said, yes, yes, yes. But not now. I'll let them know. One year down the line, another year down the line, I'm still in prison. But still I'm preaching there. I'm doing my Bible study and my work outside as a gardener. And uh, one day we got jobs going outside prison now, out of the gates of prison. Mm. You know what kind of jobs we were going to do? Mm -mm. To go and remove the back of the cinnamon tree. Yeah, we used to call it to tap, tap, mm. tap. Mm. To tap, remove the back of the cinnamon tree this is where you get cinnamon tree from, mm. uh, cinnamon, cinnamon tea. tea. Yeah. So we would move so much back and then we put them in bags and they would transport them to the factory. Mm. So before they took them, they weighed them. And then as a group, you know what we have mm. and for the day. Mm. So one day they came for an interview. And when they came to interview us, Leah was there to talk. And when I was talking about what I'm doing in prison, the president was watching, was watching the show, okay? And he said, the superintendent was telling me, do you know what the president said? He called me. He told me, is that woman, that woman, Kenyan woman still in that prison? I want her out. Wow. 
I promise her to go out to see her old mama. I want her out. Start arranging for her release. Yeah, and that's how my paro came. I was given paro in 2019. Mm. Yeah, four years before my time. Yeah. Yeah. So you only served eight years? I served eight years. Out of the 12? Yeah. How was that? How did they break the news to you? Like, hey, Leah, come here. I have good news for you. I was coming, we were coming back from work, mm. from the forest. Yeah. We used to go up in the forest. Yeah. You'd see us, we'd put on our aprons, you know, and we'd tie another one here, mm -hmm. and you put a, a, a sack here, because when you start removing the back, mm -hmm. you get so dirty, mm -hmm. and boots. Mm -hmm. So we are coming back, and our bags, we had carried our lunch, and I'm coming back so tired, and the superintendent called me, he told me, come here, Kenyan woman. Yes, yes, sir. I'm so tired, sir. Yes, how was the day? The same, so tiresome, but it's okay. He told me, do you know what Kenyan woman? Your Jesus has come back. I asked him, how did my Jesus come back? Where is he? He told me, you always worship, you always worship, and asking God to ask you, asking God to let you go home. But I'm telling you, your Jesus has come back. I asked him, sir, what are you talking about? When am I going home? He told me, come to my office. Yeah, so I went to the office. Mm -hmm. And then he explained to me what the president said. I couldn't believe it. I just broke down and started thanking God and crying and, you know. Mm. And that was that. Yeah. So there were some uh, Catholic sisters who heard about it. They used to come also for a Bible study. When they had uh, been released, they said first of, of uh, January, I should go and spend that day with them at their convent. I was given permission to go and spend that day with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm. I had a nice time. They had prepared lunch, you know, like I was now the guest because I was a free woman. Now. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I could roam around the town. Yeah. I was given permission so that I go with the, so long I go with the guard. Yeah. There we could, they used to call the prison, prison wardens, wardens yeah. guards. Mm -hmm. So long as they'd give me a guard and yeah. I'd go around town, yeah. Yeah. a free woman. Yeah, so those were my last days in uh -huh. Seychelles. Uh -huh. Yeah, I spent them well. But I left a legacy because actually my work in prison was good. Good. I good. used to take care of the, there is a grotto where the, most of them they are Catholics, so where they have the, the statue mm. of Virgin Mary. Mm. I'm the one who was taking care of that place. Yeah. I'm not a Catholic myself, but I used to clean it nicely for mm. them to come and pray. Oh. But one thing is, the superintendent would always tell me, Leah, you have to believe in this. You have to worship Mary. Mary is the one who is going to talk to Jesus for you to get released. And I'll tell him, no, this is a statue. I'm not going to worship a statue. Yeah. I'm not going to bow down. Yeah. But I'll take care of this place. Oh, wow. So the, the, when I was released, they just started saying, hey, now I believe in the God of Leah. She says she's not going to worship a statue. And she did not. She did not. And now she's gone home. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's how it happened. Yeah. Yeah. How was it like your last day in prison? You know, I always want to ask this question. Did you stand and look back at the <sighs> gate like they do in the movies? Like, huh, this is now freedom. I never want to come back in this prison. You know, there was a group of women in prison who used to mock me whenever I'm praying. They used to ask me, some other people have been given pardon to go home. How come see you've never gone home? You're always praying. When will your God come back? And I would cry and cry. But the day I was, I was leaving, I knelt down outside the prison, the women's prison. And I told them, ladies, I'm praying for your freedom also. Wow. And I've asked you, those who have been mocking me have forgiven mm. you. Yeah? But I'd ask you something, please worship my God. Start worshiping my mm. God and things will be okay for mm. you. Yeah. Mm. And you left. And I left. Uh -huh. I left them crying. Mm. Yeah. To talk to me about your journey now from Seychelles to Kenya to see your son again, <sighs> your mom. I wanted it to be a surprise. I didn't tell my son I was coming home. But I used to tell him, I'm coming home soon, I'm coming home soon. So, 
Actually, when I was coming from Seychelles, from the prison to the airport, I was escorted by the guards. Mm -hmm. And when I got at the airport, there were so many people from church who had come to see me off. Wow. It was so touching. Mm -hmm. They all came to see me off. And everybody came with something for me. You know? Everybody came with something for me. They all came. And it was somebody, I had somebody ask, is there a celebrity here or something? Mm -hmm. I told them, no, 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 no. There is no celebrity here. It's just a, a child of God yeah, going back going home. home. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. It was so, so good. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. I boarded my flight. And uh, I was not escorted like the way prisoners, when they are released, yes. they, are, they are given escort yeah. home. I was free. Mm -hmm. I was just by myself. Mm -hmm. So I enjoyed my flight. Yeah. So when I got to Nairobi, it was night. And I didn't want to alert anybody. I had my money. So I took a hotel. I went somewhere. I slept. You know, I needed time. You know, I needed time because I didn't want just to have people come see me at the airport. I didn't know how, how, how to relate with them. I needed time for, mm. for mm. myself. Mm. So I took a night there. I had all the time, you know. So the following morning, I had to check out, finally. Mm. Now I called my son. I told him, hey, he's Congo. Congo, do you know I'm in Nairobi? No, I didn't tell him I'm in Nairobi. Congo, I'm coming home soon. But I forgot that when you call from Nairobi. <laughs> <laughs> when you make a phone call yes, from Nairobi, somebody yes. will definitely know no, you are in Nairobi. Even the ringtone, is, the ringing, yeah. it's like the internationals are always like, mm. ding, ding, happening. Yeah. Even the nini is different. Uh -huh. So now I did. Uh, now I didn't have a phone. Uh -huh. So I asked uh, uh, <laughs> the receptionist, "Please, can I use your phone?" Uh, and then I'm calling my son, Coco. I'm coming uh, soon. I'm coming soon. <laughs> Mom, where are you? Ah, takuja too. I'm coming. Uh, Don't worry. Uh, be ready, but I'll be coming home soon. Layer the surprise master. Uh, <laughs> now. And then he kept quiet and he told me, "But Mom, this is a Kenyan number. number yeah. You're calling from Kenya." Yeah. I told him, ah, okay. okay. <laughs> you mean he's showing? <laughs> <laughs> you mean he's showing? Uh, of course it's showing. <laughs> you <told me. laughs> okay. Tell me, where are you? Yeah. I told him I'm somewhere in a hotel. <laughs> Let me come for you. I told him, no. Give me the directions mm -hmm. and come. No, mom, Nairobi has changed. Let me come for you. I told him, no, 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 no. Just give me the directions. Yeah. I'll bring myself there. Yes. So he gave me the directions. <laughs> mom, do you have the money? Yes, I have the money. Don't worry. Just give me the directions. I'll get there. So I went to the shop, to, to one of the shop. I bought some things for my now, my grandchildren, whom I, I don't know, I've never met. Oh, God, he had already settled and had kids. How many? Two. Oh. So you're meeting your grandkids for yeah. the first time. Yeah. And the last one is Shiro. Me. You. Yeah, already born. Yeah. So I had to go and buy them. And that is a prayer I was praying to God. God, let me not go home empty handed. At least those kids who are calling me Shosh and those calling me auntie, those my brothers and my mother. At least I'll have something for everybody. Mm. And I did have something for everybody. Yeah? Just something small, small. Mm. Yeah. So and then I took a taxi to my son's place. Mm. They were all waiting for me. Oh. That was it. <sighs> it was a well, well, warm welcome. And so touching and so emotional. You know, after so many years away. And here I meet my son, now he's a daddy. It was not easy for me. Yeah? So I stayed with them for about three, four days. And the fourth day, he had to call people to come for prayers, for thanksgiving prayers in his house. Mama has come back. Wow. And then I was asking, uh, now you are telling them I'm coming from where? Are you telling them what I was doing in Seychelles? I mean, what are you telling these people? How am I going to introduce myself to them? You tell me, Mom, relax. Just relax. These are just thanksgiving prayers. Just relax. Be yourself. Yeah? It went on like that. And then the fourth day, I went to see my mama, mm. her country. It was so emotional for mom because she was quite sick. 
but she was so happy to see me. And you know what I used to write to my mom? I'm working in Saudi and these people are not paying me. That's why I'm not able to send money home. Because I didn't want to tell her I'm in prison. If I told her I was in prison, she would have died. You know? Hmm. But at least I had something for her. Yeah. Yeah. So she also called her pastor. Pastor, come, my daughter has come back. I want you to call your people. You come here for Thanksgiving. Mutapikiwa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanksgiving for me. And that was that. Yeah. yeah? But now, here was the problem. My mom was quite sick. So after I came back, I could not leave my mom again. I had to stay with her. And whenever I'd move from home, I come to Nairobi. My mom would say, call her back, tell her to come back. Mm -hmm. And then I would ask her, Mami, nini, nini. she would tell me, I want you here. You are leaving me, who is going to take care of me? Mm -hmm. And there's my other sister, but she wanted me to be with her. Mm -hmm. So I said to God, God, I used to ask you to allow me to come back and find my mom. Mm -hmm. And now she's here, I'll take care of her. Mm -hmm. And I stayed with mom all this time until last year, April. 2019, she passed on. Mm. Yeah. May she rest. Yeah. And uh, since mom left, after she left, I felt like uh, there was a vacuum. I felt so empty. Mm. And uh, I felt like now I don't fit at home. You know, when she was there, I was so, so much carried away with everything mm. going on with her, taking care of her and mm. all this. Mm. But now when she's gone, I felt so empty and there was a big vacuum. And I wondered, what am I doing here? What can I do with myself mm. now? I stayed at home for some time. I'm trying to grow potatoes. It doesn't work. Yeah? I can't do any gardening. Yeah? Life in the village is so hard for me. In Seychelles, we, use, we used even to have machines for washing our clothes. At home, we have to go. At times, there's no water. I have to go look for water. And, and I ask God, God, what's all this about? Mm. And I'm complaining, complaining. I'm saying I'm not able to do this. One day, a friend of mine called me. And she told me, there's a seminar for women empowerment at uh, Kenyatta University. Nairobi University, can you come in July? Told her, I don't have bus fare. I'll give you bus fare. You just come and mm. meet other women. Mm. So I went for the interview, uh, for the seminar, first day, second day. So like I'm seated there. These women are just talking about their experiences, whatever they are doing in their businesses. And I wondered, how comes nobody is talking about ex-prisoners? Yeah? So the second day, I said, excuse me, Please give me a minute. I was given a minute. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, my name is Leah. Uh -huh. I just want to cherish you women. Hey. How come? Since yesterday I've been here. And today I'm here. I'm following everything. But I've not had anybody mention about women ex-prisoners. Ex I mean, does it mean these women from prison, they've been excluded from the society? Mm -hmm. And then somebody asked me, Leah, what are you talking about? I said, I'm an I'm a next prisoner I'm a victim of this. So I gave them a, a bit of my story. And I told them, you know, women coming from prison, they suffer a lot. Most of them suffer from shame and rejection. Of course. Yeah? And they need somebody to hold their mm. hand. Mm. But here you people, you're talking about this, you're talking about this, but nobody's talking about an ex-prisoner woman. Mm. Who takes care of these women? How can they go where they belong? Yeah? Because, you see, when you come out of prison, if you don't fall in good hearts, it's very easy to go back to the same crime. Yes. You know why? You have to be people, you want to go to people you can identify with. So if you don't get people you can identify with, you go back there. Look for your old friends. Eventually, back in crime. But if you fall somewhere, people who are leading you, no, let's move this way. Fine, you'll be able to move on. Mm -hmm. So somebody told me, We'll introduce you to somebody there, another one, somebody there. I'm telling you, the moment there was a break and I went to the toilet, so many women were following me. Hey, hey you, where were you? You know, even me, I was there, even me, I was there. And I asked them, and how comes you're not talking? Eh? 
I told them, you see, you suffer from shame. Mm. You don't want people to know. Yes. Me, I want people to know. You suffer from shame. Yeah, you're still going through mm. that. Me, I've come out of that. Mm. And I don't care what people say about me. I'm me. Yeah. Mm. So, I was told, uh, I was directed to somebody, uh, Mr. Machetti. I went to his office in the in Westlands. Mm. He told me, he told me he deals with uh, violence agenda and yes. women violence agenda and yeah. all this. Yeah. But uh, they directed me to somebody else. This somebody else, uh, uh, Njenga. Yes. He also deals with uh, violence, mm -hmm. women violence. Yeah. He directed me to a warden in Taita. Yeah. He gave me the number. Mm. I called this warden, Justina. Mm. Justina now gave me the number for one of the officials at Greenstad, oh. Sarah Odima. Mm. I called Sarah, mm -hmm. and she was so excited to talk to me. Oh, oh. I had Sarah here. <laughs> her voice. <laughs> Her energy, so I can imagine. She was like, oh no, you are one of us. <laughs> you are one of us. You are one of us. You are one of us. You are in the right place. You know, you come to the office. Come to the office. Sarah, you're such a vibe. Yeah. Where are you? Where are you? Yeah, she told me, right now I'm in Mombasa. But tomorrow morning, come to the office. I'll also be arriving. With her voice yeah. now. <laughs> so the following morning, I went to that office in Westlands. Yeah. And I met uh, oh. Faith. The Sarah now came. Yes. Just arrived from Mombasa. Uh. Early in the morning, and I met uh, Supreme. Mm. And they were so happy. Oh. You know, like I felt, oh, this is where I belong. Wow. People who appreciate me. Yes. They are my who sisters. Don't judge you. Yeah. People who don't judge me, who don't point fingers at me. Wow. I felt good. You felt home. I felt at home. Yeah. And uh, since then, we've been working a journey with them. At and Clean I thank Start. God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thank God for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What has what has Clean Start done that has changed your life? Clean Start. One thing. One thing is that belonging, feeling that I belong. Yes. There's nothing ma bad as rejection. When you feel rejected, that's why you hear people going into depression, yeah. people committing suicide out of depression. Mm -hmm. But when you have people mm -hmm. who appreciate you mm -hmm. and they don't judge you, they just take you the way you yes. are. You feel you belong. Yeah. So me, whenever I'm talking to any of them, I feel I'm talking to my sister. Mm -hmm. And I can't tell them anything. Beautiful. Because they don't judge me. Yes. Because even right now, right here I am, there are still those who are still judging me. Even at home, there are still those who still point fingers at, at me. We are a like drug trafficker. <laughs> yeah. This one. This one. Mm. She this was in a prison. Criminal. Yeah. Be mm. aware. There are those who still don't trust you. Even the local church, they still point fingers at you. You know? They use you as an example. Uh -huh. So you don't feel good in their in their midst. Yes. You don't want to go to their church anymore. Mm. But when you meet these people. Yeah. This is my family. This is where I belong. Yes. I feel good. Yeah. Yeah. They're just like me. Mm. Yeah. Mm. There's a special program there I want you to talk to me about because yeah. I feel like Clean Start will start giving this program to my audience, me yeah. included. Yeah. Ufunuo. Ufunuo. What happens there? I feel like this is the counseling everyone needs in Kenya right this now. This is the counseling everybody needs uh, in Kenya. And before we get to that, yeah. let me tell you that in prison, yes. in the Seychelles, yeah. there is this program called Restorative Justice. Yeah. This restorative justice is a program which was brought in prison by, by a South African mm -hmm. called Jonathan Crinton mm -hmm. and his wife, mm -hmm. Jenny. Mm -hmm. This Jonathan Crinton was a prisoner himself. So after prison, he came up with this program, educating mm -hmm. prisoners and ex-prisoners. Mm -hmm. So he brought this restorative justice yes. to us in the Seychelles. Yeah. It's all about how we treat crime. Mm -hmm where you get to a point of admitting your mistakes, mm. taking responsibility, mm. moving, taking a step forward, mm -hmm. you know? Because most of us, you know what takes us backwards? It's self-denial. Yes. You say no. You did it, but you say no. And you continue saying no until you leave prison mm. and you committed the crime, but you're still not guilty. But you know inside yourself, you are guilty. guilty. So you'll never move on. Mm. And responsibility taking responsibility for your action mm. and then talking to people about crime mm. and how to come out of it mm. and this program starts from it starts from the roots mm. your background how are you brought up 
what happened to you? How did you get into this? Yeah? Like me, for example. Yes. I was brought up in a Christian family. I went to good schools. I'm educated up to A-levels. My dad was a rich man. So we didn't have any problems as I was growing up. Yes. As I was growing up, my dad was a rich man. He was a deal those times of before. Mm. So they had money. Mm -hmm. But uh, so where did my problems come from? It's after I left their nest and I went outside. You see? So uh, restorative just educates you on mm -hmm. all this. Mm -hmm. How did you get, how did you get, is it your choice? Is it friends? Self-acceptance. You accept yourself the mm -hmm. way you are mm -hmm. and you move on. Mm -hmm. And then this restorative justice, it comes to a point whereby the offender and the offended, they forgive one another. Mm -hmm. Okay? Like me, I used to be bitter with the person who sent me. But you see, I, was, I also had a, pre, a, a part to pray. Yeah, you, you played a role. Yeah, I did. God, I love, oh my God, Leah, I love you for being so honest. You had a role to play. Because sometimes it's easier for us to put the blame on another person as long as we don't touch ourselves. Yeah. As long as, uh-uh, mm -hmm. me, mm -hmm. I am not, the reason I turned out to be the way I am, it's because as long as we are pointing a finger at someone mm. and not looking deep down ourselves, mm. we ain't never going to grow though. Mm. We are not going to grow. We are not going to grow. We are not going to grow and that bitterness is mm. going to be with us mm. and we will not take a, a yes. step forward. Yeah. Yeah. So really, uh, one thing, one thing uh, I would like to do in my life, mm. if God allows, mm. I would like to be a uh, motivational speaker. I'd like, to, uh, I'd like to talk to somebody else about this. Uh, I'd like to educate somebody because like this restorative justice yes. program yeah. is so extensive. Yes. You, you can't talk about it. We, not today, tomorrow. It's so extensive. Yeah. Can I tell you something? Yeah. You'll make, even right now, you are making an amazing motivational speaker. Thank you. It's in you. Mm. Someone can see it and point it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you know, you, you know when you hear it from somebody who's been there, yeah. I've been in those shoes. Yes. When I'm telling you about drugs, I've done it, yeah. I'm telling you about prison. I've been there, yeah. I'm telling you don't do this, don't drink, don't smoke. I've been there, yeah. but I've never smoked drugs, mm. cigarettes, yes. mm. alcohol, yes, but drugs, no. Mm. But I've done all that. But somebody getting it from me, they will listen to me. Yes. But you, you've never done it. The other person has never done it. Even if you try to tell me, I mm. say, what is she telling me? Mm. But me, I know the consequences. Yes. And I'll tell you, my sister, my mm. brother, mm. stop there. Stop there. Because the consequences are not good. Yes. Because now look at me, all those wasted years, you know, all that time. Maybe I could have moved on with my life in a yes. better way. You know, but I, God. I look at them as mm. not wasted years, all those learning years. Mm -hmm. They are learning years. Mm -hmm. You know, they are years... You might think, God, I wasted so many years of my life. Mm. Until you look back and you realize mm. those were the learning years of your life. Mm -hmm. They were the learning years. Mm. What you learn from there, mm. you won't learn anywhere else. Mm. Yeah. So I kind of I appreciate the experiences. Mm -hmm. No matter how nasty they are, yeah. no matter how negative they are, yeah. every experience in this life mm -hmm. is bound to teach us something. Mm -hmm. And the more I grow, mm -hmm. the more I tend to think no experience should go to waste. Yes. What am I learning? Yeah. Is my main question. Mm -hmm. What am I learning in mm -hmm. this experience? Mm -hmm. Is what I try to take home. Yeah. So those were learning years. Yes. Yeah. Look at you. Yeah. Honestly, mm -hmm. would we be sitting here having a conversation? No, no, no. Had no, you no. not gone through that experience? There will be no conversation with me. There will be no story. There There's nothing to tell. There you go. Mm -hmm. yeah. Back to Ufunuo. Yeah. yeah. Now, about Ufunuo, yes. I'd like to invite my sister Beatrice. Yeah. Because she's been there longer than I yeah. to talk about it. Yes. Yes. So, Beatrice. You, you served time in a Ghanaian uh, prison for also trafficking, narcotics, right? You are here with your sister, Leah, and <laughs> I, I just love, I love this. I love that people can bond over their past experiences. So if you could talk to us about Ufunuo briefly. We, we first have circles of healing. Mm. Please, that will take you through circles of healing of how to, uh, to understand yourself, to understand from the ground you came in 
and the ground you la- you landed in and now where you are going mm. so you they they we normally go through circles of healing before mm. you get into the ufunuo mm. and when we talk about the ufunuo is when now you are taught how to accept yourself yes. once you accept yourself you feel like there's something that has left you mm. and now you are able to bring yourself out to the society mm. and talk mm. like me i gave myself my i yeah. gave my story and uh, my story was painful because i wasn't even able to come out of the society and mm. talk mm. i wasn't able to i was putting myself in another in prison i was imprisoning myself in the house but when i came out and i was able to go through circles of healing mm. i was able to go through ufunuo that is how i came to understand that when you speak mm. there's a kind of freedom that god puts in you yes. and you are able to speak it out to yourself yes. okay so leah yes i mean how, how, what do you feel about beatrice mm. knowing that the both of you mm. served almost a similar mm. you served time for a similar crime yeah <laughs> beatrice <laughs> when i first met her <laughs> and then i was looking at her uh, and i was saying oh god you mean this lady was also in prison outside kenya yeah. you know and uh, you know uh, there's a time we went uh, to strathmore yes. college there was something for us the green start group yeah. and that's where i met beatrice mm-hmm. and others and i was looking at her because she was sitting next to me and she was told to help me around yes. because i was new yeah. and i was saying oh my god you mean this one also was in prison <laughs> She looked so innocent and yeah, somebody told me and somebody told me and you also look innocent and uh, said oh the innocent looks get to yes. prison you mm. know I love her as my sister yeah. and she's on so encouraging yeah. we chat once in a while uh, yeah and we love one another uh-huh. like siblings yes yes because we've gone through the same thing mm. yeah allow me to give you your flowers Leah oui. Pentecostal Assembly of Seychelles. Yes. Prison Ministry Heal a Wound and Save a Soul. Certificate of attendance presented to Leah for attending and participating in prayer and personal Bible study. Clap for Leah. Today. So Thank you. You also made a pledge. Yeah. Let me read this. Huh? Heartlines values for life my pledge yeah. today I will love today I will give my compassion first and my judgment last yeah. I will persevere no matter how difficult the path I travel I want to be honest in all I say and all I do yes thank you for that yes. right today I will be responsible not just with myself but for my family I will strive to forgive because forgiveness frees the heart mm-hmm. oh god I will learn self control for there's yeah. a time for everything under the heavens I will accept you not because we are the same but because God made us different mm-hmm. today I will give grace because a second chance may change your life this is to certify that Len- Leah Kung has attended the Heartlines programs on values for life at Montangne Pose prison congratulations thank you you are deserving thank you and i will steal this from you mm. this is a beautiful pledge thank you i feel like i should have it printed mm. somewhere by the entrance mm-hmm. and a couple of other certificates uh this one you attended one week a workshop on restorative justice that's mm-hmm. the one you were talking about yes uh, cambridge international exams international is this international general certificate of secondary education oh yes you went for adult learning and distance education center yes. let them know you have a cambridge certificate oh, yes, here oh, yes, yes, let yes, them yes, know let them know oh and then you had a beautiful tribute to mm. god huh? mm-hmm. can i read read them read this for us i think this is i think you should be the one to read this for us this my tribute to god i wrote it um like when we were doing uh, IGCSE we were told to write a, uh, you write something to god mm-hmm. a tribute to god and this mm-hmm. is what i wrote The more I aspire about God, the more I'm awed by the wonders of his creation. When I lift my eyes to one's heaven, I see a myriad of stars, the sun and the moon. I look around myself and see the beautiful green environment. I ask myself, why are some people so obnoxious about God? They just want to follow things of the underworld. Why can't people stop worshiping other deities and worship the living God? I know we could come out in a more cardinal manner. And I think about God's creation. I hope one Oh, I think I know we could come out in a more candid manner and think about God's creation. I hope one day we could all nestle in God's mighty arms. 
Let us not have a lapse in our prayers. God knows us just like a kernel inside a fruit. My God says he is I am, the first and the last, the alpha and the omega. He was, he is, and he'll be. Our God is a future. Written by Lea Kumo. That's beautiful. Thank you. Yes. You know, it's beautiful to see even in your eyes, you yeah. are working with your pledge. Yes. The pledge you made, yeah. the aspiration, mm -hmm. everything, yes. right? Yeah. And I also know you are taking a computer course with yeah. CleanStart. Yeah, with CleanStart, yes. How is that? Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Yes. Yes. It's good. It's good. I, I, and work, do you work? Because... Apart from now all this, mm -hmm. we gotta put food on the table. Yeah. So how do you work now, or right what now, are your aspirations? Right now, mm -hmm. I really don't uh, have a permanent job, mm -hmm. like we can say. But for the last two months, mm -hmm. I've been working somewhere in Namanga, mm -hmm. started sitting on for a manager who was on leave mm -hmm. in a certain lodge mm -hmm. for two months. It yeah. will be ending. Uh, by 15th of December. Yeah. So I don't have a permanent job. Talk to us about your qualification. So you can manage a hotel? Yeah, I can do hotels. I can do tours, yes. reservations. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Front office. Yes. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. And I know so many doors will open for you. Yeah. But as we wind up, mm. have you forgiven yourself? Oh, yes. I've really forgiven myself because it has to start with me. Mm. I have really forgiven myself. Yeah. Because if I don't forgive myself, I'm not going to be able to forgive somebody else. Mm. So I've forgiven myself yeah. and I'm moving on with my life. Yeah. Yes. A mom will be watching you. Yes. And just like the way you are, the, the in a position of making yeah. a terrible mistake. Uh -huh. Because mothers will do what they can for their children. Yes. You did what you thought was right yeah. for your son. Yeah. But now looking back after experiencing all the things you've experienced, mm -hmm. what would be your message to someone watching you? Mm -hmm about to make mm. that mistake. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Somebody watching me out there, maybe yeah. you're just about to make that mistake. Yeah. I did it myself, knowingly. Please, my sister and my brother, I dad you don't. Yes. Don't go for that. No matter how big the problem is, please stay away from crime. Yeah. Yeah, because there are consequences. Yes. And they are not good. Mm. Yeah, this is like a wood that will be left in you and it will take ages to heal. Mm. So please stay away from crime. Mm -hmm. There are other ways of solving problems. Mm -hmm. No matter how difficult they are, let's stay away from crime. Mm. Crime does not pay mm. at all, at all. At all. Yeah. Yeah. Crime does not pay. Yes. It's only by God's favor I had some good experiences. Mm -hmm. And I landed in good hands. Mm. You don't know if you commit your crime today where you are going to land. You might even end, end up, up your life. Yes. There are people who are caught with drugs and they are... What do you say? They are harmed. Mm. Yeah. And it's only them. that me and my sister here. We are lucky. Mm. We came out alive. Mm. Yeah. But there are those who are not lucky. So please don't don't gamble with your life. Mm. Stay away from crime. Stay away. Yeah. 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 But most importantly, let's trust in God. Amen. Yeah. How is you and your son now? Oh, we are buddies. Hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> your buddies. Yeah, we are buddies. Uh -huh. We are good friends. Yes. Yeah. That's although, beautiful. Mm. Although. It's not the same again. Mm. So many years away. We've From been apart for so many years. I found him with a new family. Mm. So things are not the same, my sister. Mm. The things are not the same. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because he was uh, uh, he was without me for so many years. Mm -hmm. So things are not the same. The same. We are somehow this kidogo kidogo apart. Kidogo There's apart. A, yeah, because he has a family of him. Yeah. Of himself. Mm. Yeah. So things are not the same. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Crime does not, not pay. pay. Lovely. And also if someone wants to get hold of you, mm -hmm. how can they reach you? How can you reach me? Yes. Lea Kongo. Yeah. My number zero seven five nine yeah. six zero mm. one nine mm. one two. One two. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I'm also hunting for a job. Yeah. And it will come. Yes. And it will come. Yes. I know that for sure. Thank you. It will come. Thank you. Wishing you all the best, Leah. Yes. Thank you, Beatrice. Second chances are here for mm. everyone. Yeah. We've all fallen short. Mm. It's what we choose to do mm. when we get a second chance that car. 
yeah. that counts. Mm -hmm. More grace to you. Yeah. May more doors open. Yes. May you be that motivational speaker. Amen. May I see you everywhere. Mm -hmm. Giving talks of hope, yeah. helping people make their pledges, yes. helping people write their visions down on paper. Mm -hmm. You get it. Yes. Eh? And they were not wasted years. Mm -hmm. They were learning it. Yes, and here we are. Lessons have been learned, yes. and you're only able to share this story because a lesson has been learned. Yes. Yes. All right, my people, mm -hmm. if you've picked anything here, let it be <laughs> that number one, even if you're going to do whatever it is you need to do, choices have consequences. It's what you decide to do with your second chance in life. Forgive yourself. Self-acceptance as compared to self-denial. Admitting it, I did it. Because the moment you admit you did it, that's the only way you are able to move forward mm. with life. Mm. And you heard her talking about the restoration justice mm. back in Seychelles. Mm. That is what is happening there. But here, even in our country, we have amazing organizations such as Clean Start. Mm -hmm. Because look at how much she struggled to fit in. Mm. And then finding herself with women like Beatrice who have gone through the same things. They have accepted what they've done mm. and now it's time for them to continue. And Clean Start is there to tell them, you know what, no matter what, kama nasifu Clean Start uniambie, mimi staki kuwapatia sifa zaburi. Are they good people? They are good people, yes. They are good people. They are, You yes. can vouch for them. Amazing. Yes. Mm. I needed that to come from you yeah. because I want you guys to go out there and support Support them whichever way you can. Mm. And if you want, because it's very important that once people come out of prison, where do they go next? Even me personally as a journalist, I never knew we had such a gap in this country. Mm. Because once people come out of prison, we expect them to go back and start, you know, kama alikuwa na uza mboga, aendele kuuza mboga. But there's trauma. There's so much trauma. There's so much self-healing, self-acceptance to do that they need someone to hold their hand, right? So if you want to get in touch with Leah, my people, first and foremost, I know we can't, so we are going to, if you are there and you are watching and you know there is like a job somewhere, Leah is good. She is good at it, and her contact details are right here on the screen. Na kikosea, please kujeni muniambia, li nule mama ulituambia ni mzuri, amekosea. I will take the blame, because imagine, I look her right now, and all I can see is a woman ready to live her life again. Let's give her that. And if you want also to support Clean Start in the amazing initiatives that they have going on, they want to build a rehabilitation center. Guys, the pay bill number is here. There is a PayPal and there is an Mpesa number where you can channel your donation. They've not paid me to do this. This is an LNN initiative also because I want us to create a community that has the ability to continue impacting lives. So this Christmas, if you are wondering, this December, if you are wondering where to channel your support, Leah's contacts are right here. Clean Start's contact details are right here and also pinned on the comment section. Let's continue impacting our society. Let's continue believing that we can all start our lives again because second chances, third chances, fourth chances, fifth chances are there for everyone. But as Leah said, not everyone makes it out alive. And Beatrice said, freedom, freedom is expensive. Don't take yours for granted. I appreciate you. 600k subscribers, here we come. It's by God's grace. And situendele kujenga inch yetu one step at a time. God, I have good news for you guys, but I can't tell you right now. <laughs> so you'll be seeing me here soon, <laughs> screaming and telling you I have made that prayer the entire year. And we have good news. So I'll share with them um, soon. So stay tuned. May God bless you. Forgive. Learn. Sijui kawatu wanafaa kuforget. Leah here shocked us. We had another Leah. And she was like, Mimi na mpenda na nimemsamehea. And that's the reason we said we need the ufunuo. Mm. If Clean Start can also write an entire book on ufunuo mm. and the circles of healing, mm. we need those in our society. Mm. But above all, guys, freedom is expensive. Mm. Self-acceptance as compared to self denial thank you so much to everyone that has tuned in 
I don't get to do this alone. My incredible team, our amazing editors, Sam, Edgar, and Kelvin, and our incredible camera person and director, the legendary himself, Edwin Ochieng. Thank you so much for everything you do to make this work reach people in good time and in beautiful quality. My name is Lynn Googie. My people are animalizing issue. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>